Today we're going to be diving into how to mix electric guitars. When I'm working in the studio, it's most likely going to be a pop country style track. So there's a lot of electric and acoustic guitars. So I'm going to play the intro and chorus of this song so you guys can kind of get the vibe of what I'm working on. And then we're going to dive into mixing an electric guitar in the chorus. Listen for the electric guitar that comes in on the chorus and that's the one we're going to work on. So if I, if I take the electric out, it really takes a lot of the excitement out of this chorus. So it's a great sounding electric tone. I recorded this using my Fractal Axe FX3 straight in. There's no reverb or anything like that because usually I like to apply my reverbs within my DAW. So today we're going to be using a couple of Studio One stop plugins that I really think are awesome. And we're going to go ahead and kick it off with the compressor here. And notice that I have the guitar panned hard left. And usually whenever I'm trying to make my chorus stand out, I'll have a lot of my guitars wide panned. Even though this is just a mono electric guitar, it's only going to happen in the left ear. Now that'll make more sense here in a minute. But let's start it off with a little bit of compression. And what you can see, I just have a two to one ratio, so very light, and it's only knocking off about three, three and a half dB here. So that's kind of squeezing it just a little bit. So we're gonna follow that up with a little bit of this red light distortion. You can hear what this adds. So all of a sudden, this guitar track just got a whole lot meaner. And let me go ahead and bypass, that way you can really hear uh, what this plug-in is bringing. So that's straight from the fractal. But you add this distortion in with it, it really just helps it stand out uh, and it's gonna help it, you know, poke out of the mix with that, that little bit of saturation on it too. So next we're gonna go, I usually like to run mostly everything through these LA-2As. They just sound great on pretty much anything. On these 2As, I find that you can uh, compress anywhere from three to seven dB. So let's see where this one's hanging out at. Yeah, so right about it's five. And what this is doing, is just an overall kind of squeeze to keep everything in place. That way some of those guitar notes are just poking out uh, of the mix really dynamic. I want them to be very focused in the mix. And one thing that I always like doing with my guitars is using this API EQ here. So let's take a listen to what this thing's bringing. In the mid frequencies, it looks like I bumped it down uh, 2K as well. And then I've got a little bit of the high end lift at a little bit of 10K. And that's what this EQ does. It just smooths it out. It gets some of that muddiness out of there. That's what it bypassed. And this is the effect with the EQ. Now, I can solo this out just so you can hear what the plugins are actually bringing to the signal chain. But what it really matters is in the mix. And here's without it. So a lot of that lower mids, it's cleaning up all of that and has this high sizzle in the guitars that I really like and that's what you get with that API EQ. So now that we have everything compressed and EQ'd right, the next thing that I wanna to hop to is some of the reverbs that I would apply to this guitar. And one of my favorite reverbs is Studio One Stock Room Reverb. Now this reverb right here just always sounds good and it's on most of the productions that I'm, I'm producing in Studio One. That's dry. Here's with the reverb. Big long tail on there. I'm not sure if you can hear that without headphones, but this reverb just sounds awesome. 
And so what I like to follow this up with is usually you're going to have reverb and a little bit of delay on the guitar. So the delay that I'm using today is called this replica delay. This is a uh, Native Instruments plug-in and it sounds great. And I want to show you guys how you can pan your delays, especially whenever you're working with an instrument that is hard panned to one side like this electric guitar is. So I want my delay to happen on the opposite side of where this guitar is panned. So just to kind of give you a little taste of what it sounds like, let me play this. I'm actually going to take the room reverb off for a second so you can just hear the delay. So I'm going to stop the signal so you can hear the trail of how long it is and what it sounds like. And so what this does is whenever, you know, you have your delay panned to one side, it creates this ultra wide effect. Like it, this guitar is just playing through a hall. It goes from one ear to the other. And this is another way to get a big guitar sound without layering a ton of electric guitars. This is just one electric guitar that I'm applying a little bit of mix magic to, to get it a really wide sound. I really enjoy mixing guitars this way because I don't have to layer a ton of tracks to get a big sound. So I want to add my reverb back. And now that you've heard what that delay is bringing to the mix, let's go ahead and, and listen to this guitar and how it's sitting in the mix now. So obviously on that delay send, I'll bring that back a little bit. And just to be clear, whenever I go to my Replica XT here, when I go to this channel, you can see this is panned all the way to the right. I don't want that delay signal coming through where that dry signal is coming through. I want to separate them and that's what's going to get the width in this course here. Let me go ahead and unmute everything and let you hear how this guitar is sitting in this chorus. Pretty happy with how that guitar is sitting in the mix. If you guys learned something from this video, make sure to hit that link in the description and check out musiccityplaybook.com. We'll catch you guys in the next video.